So today we're going to be talking about the elderly and disabled rabbits. Um, so common issues that we're going to see in elderly rabbits to start off with. The first thing I want to tell you guys is age is not a disease, um, but we do start to see certain issues more commonly in older animals. So the common issues that we're going to see are going to be things like arthritis. Of course, that's the biggest one in any species of animal as they age that we do start to see joint problems. And then also weight loss, weight gain problems are sometimes a little bit more uh, frequently identified in the older aged rabbit. As far as disability goes in rabbits, the main problems we're going to see are paresis or paralysis. We'll get into that a little bit more, the specific definitions of that. Um, chronic head tilts are sometimes considered a, a disability. And then rabbits that have had poorly healed fractures can also be disabilities as well. So we're going to go over each of those in turn. So to start off with arthritis, well, what is arthritis? The definition of arthritis is inflammation in the joint spaces. So if you look at a word and it has the word itis at the end of it, itis means inflammation. So if you see the word in front of it, arth, that's the joint, so inflammation of the joint. And the thing to know about arthritis is it has this progression through very mild stages and as it gets worse and worse we get into these severe advanced stages. Arthritis starts off in the cartilage. So you can see in the pictures that we have up here, this is a normal joint. So you have the two bones, and then what's on the end of those bones is cartilage. And that cartilage is kind of nice and soft and keeps the joint nice and fluid and able to have those bones move past one another nicely. When you get arthritis, what happens is you start to have destruction within that cartilage. And you can see it in this picture here where the cartilage starts to break down. So in the early phases of arthritis, arthritis, it's the cartilage that's being damaged, not the bone that's being damaged. And as that cartilage is being worn down, eventually it can get to a really severe stage where you actually have loss of cartilage and you start to have destruction of the bone. And then in this picture even here, it shows little fragments of cartilage. You can have um, pieces of bone that essentially ossify in, in different parts of the joint and you can really see some pretty significant changes to those joints and those changes really are going to limit the ability of that animal to move that joint and also is going to allow for pain to occur with these guys. So what are the complications of arthritis? Well that number one complication that we see is pain. Animals hurt when they have arthritis because they can't move their joints as well as they once were able to. And if they have breakdown of cartilage and little pieces of cartilage or little pieces of bone are floating around in the joint space, and that joint space is supposed to be this nice kind of smooth fluid surface and now you have these little crunchy things moving around there scraping against stuff, that's going to cause them to be really uncomfortable. The other issues that we will sometimes see with arthritis is weight gain. I put weight gain up there because when you have an animal that isn't able to move as much, they want to sit around more. And if they're eating the same amount of calories that they were when they were active and running all over the place and having a good time, and now they're just sitting, they're not going to be burning up those calories. Those calories are going to go into storage, they're going to put on some excess pounds, um, which only complicates the issue even further. And then the other thing that can occur with arthritis is mus muscle atrophy. And what muscle atrophy is, is those muscles um, that are helping to move the bones and everything, if they're not being utilized as much, if they're not working as much as they once were before, they're not going to really have the um, strength and uh, mass to them that they had once before. That old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it definitely applies to muscles. If you don't use those muscles, they start to sort of shrink up. They don't go away, they're always there, but their size definitely decreases, um, which also further complicates the issue of arthritis. In this picture here, this is Poppy, um, one of the recently passed away rabbits from Zoo Corner. I put her picture up there. She's an elderly rabbit who came to the rescue she was probably around 9 or 10 when she came into the rescue. Um, and you can see her front paws here are kind of splayed out to the sides. She had really severe arthritis in, in her feet. So. so how do we control arthritis then? Um, arthritis is not something we can cure. Unfortunately, there's no 
drugs out there or treatment options or modalities that will cure arthritis that we have yet. Maybe one day we'll have some cures. But right now, what we think about more is control. How can we prevent animals from being painful? How can we prevent this from getting worse? There are scientific studies that actually have um, evidence behind them that show certain things actually work for arthritis, but then there's a lot of other things that are sort of empirical that may or may not help with arthritis, may help some animals with arthritis, but don't help everybody with arthritis. The things that we do know have scientific evidence behind them that say, yes, you can utilize these things for arthritis, and they do actually help animals. Um, pain relievers in the form of NSAIDs. What an NSAID is stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And so NSAIDs in the human world are going to be things like aspirin, ibuprofen, those kind of medications. Um, in the animal world, we tend to use medicam mostly for rabbits. There are other NSAIDs that can be used um, for animals, but rabbits tend to do well with Medicam. How that particular drug works, it says it all in the name NSAID. It's an anti-inflammatory medication. It doesn't have any steroidal properties. And as it reduces inflammation in the joint, it's going to help to reduce pain as well. So that's, that's really its function. The next thing that has scientific evidence behind it is weight loss. Animals that have more weight on them just have more pressure on the joints. Um, so getting weight off of an animal can be really helpful to relieve some of the pressure on their joints and allow maybe a little bit better movement for them. The other thing that has good scientific evidence behind it is omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are going to be things like fish oil, flax seed. There's plenty of other ones out there, chia seed. There's, there's lots. But the ones that have a lot of scientific evidence behind them are going to be your fish oils and, and flax oils. And fish oil has more scientific evidence behind it. Um, but the thing that's actually working within those oils is the omega-3 fatty acid. And what that omega-3 fatty acid does is it helps to reduce inflammation. It takes a while for those things to work. They don't start working right away. It's something that has to be in the animal system for at least a month, sometimes up to three months before you're really starting to see effects from it. And it basically changes the cellular um, cell wall and everything to make it so that there's less inflammation in the long run. Other things that people will um, utilize, soft cushion bedding for these guys so that we aren't putting a lot of pressure on different joints. And then um, I put other nutraceuticals. So we're going to go over that, what these other nutraceuticals are. So nutraceuticals are nutritional supplements. There's lots of different nutraceuticals out there for a variety of different ailments. Um, the nutraceuticals that are often used for arthritis are going to be things like glucosamine and chondroitin. Those are the, the main ones that people will use for arthritis. And, you know, people use them, use them for their dogs, their horses. Lots of different animals will use glucosamine and chondroitin. There's different studies that show they have benefits, and there's different studies that show they don't have benefits. There's some animals that seem like they do really well with them, and some animals that don't really seem to respond to them at all. So it's something that I tend to use more on an individual basis. It may work for this particular animal. It may not, but let's try it and see if we can help the animal with it. I do caution people a little bit with nutraceuticals because the problem with nutraceuticals is they are not um, regulated by the FDA. So medications are regulated by the FDA. They're supposed to have what they say they have in them at the concentrations that they do. Nutraceuticals, are, because they are not regulated, may or may not have what they say in them when you pick up a bottle of fish oil, when you pick up a bottle of glucosamine and chondroitin from the store. There have been um, different studies that have actually, you know, people have gone out to a pharmacy, picked up these different sort of nutraceuticals, and actually tested them to see what's in them. And sometimes it's exactly what it says. It has what is on the label. But then there's been times where it doesn't have as much as what it's supposed to, or sometimes it has more. And so you can run into problems with that because you may be underdosing an animal. You may be overdosing an animal with something. So when we're dealing with nutraceuticals, I 
really like for people to go with reputable companies, companies that have actually tested their stuff and actually can show you data to say, hey, look, this is what we have in our product and is actually in here. There's a group called Consumer Labs. It's online. There's a website that you can go to, consumerlabs.com, and they actually test lots of different nutraceuticals out there. The only thing with their website is you have to be a member. So if you join them, then you can actually look at their different studies that they've done and look at the you know, whatever product it is that you want to purchase from over the counter and see, is this a good product or not? A few um, that I do know are good products that are products specifically for animals. I put up there, Nutramax is a really good company. Um, uh, Vetri Science and Verbac are good companies. So if you're going to get some nutraceuticals, ones from those companies have been proven to actually have what they say they have in it. So good ones to stick with. Okay, so there are other ways to control the complications of arthritis, physical therapy, acupuncture, massage therapy, laser therapy. We are going to talk more about these things um, towards the end of the lecture. So, but definitely a lot of these things can really help our rabbits. Oops. <laughs>